fostering good manners. Christine Porth is an associate professor at the McDonough School of Business at Georgetown University and author of Mastering Civility. What do you mean by mastering civility? Well, I think it's all about trying to be more mindful and attentive and being respectful of people. What made you decide there was a need to write a book about it? Well, because I think we're really struggling on it, especially now. Over the last 20 years, I've seen a huge uptick in incivility or disrespect in the workplace. And so I wanted to show what the costs are of this, but also try to point out the potential positives, especially for leaders who are civil and set a tone for that. What are some examples of uncivility in the workplace? I think mocking and belittling people, uh, teasing people in ways that sting, telling offensive jokes, texting in meetings. Uh, the tricky thing is that it's all in the eyes of the beholder. So it's whether someone felt disrespected. We may not mean anything by it, but if people feel that way, you're probably going to see consequences. Were you able to figure out the reason why there's been an uptick of this in the past 10, 20 years? Yes. Well, the number one reason people give for being uncivil is because of stress. They feel overwhelmed. And I think that, you know, it's been shown that people are more stressed out just generally. I think technology has a huge effect on this. So people feel like they're on 24-7. And also it becomes tougher to connect well with people when you're using a lot of emails and things like that, where you don't have the tone, uh, you don't have the nonverbals. And especially with all the cultural differences, it becomes, I think, a little bit more challenging that way. Do you think that um, the expanse of the internet and the sarcasm and the comedy that's on there and sometimes the, the hurtful behavior that occurs online has something to do with the incivility in the workplace? I do. I mean, I definitely think it flows both ways. What we hear from managers is, why aren't we getting people that have better norms for civility? Like, why can't we you know, get them trained? Um, but it certainly goes the other way. You know, we've seen that people that are feel disrespected at work take it home with them, you know, and take it out on others, whether it's online, trolling, things like that. But, you know, take out their frustrations on others. What is the benefit to management to develop a more civil workplace? A huge benefit in terms of costs. So incivility is incredibly expensive. I mean, 12% of people will leave the workplace because they feel mistreated. Uh, so I think that there's also, when people feel treated disrespectfully, it takes them off track. They can't focus as well. They're not nearly as productive. They're far less creative and helpful. Um, and what we find is when people feel treated with respect, they are they do tend to perform better. They are more creative. They are more helpful, far more likely to stay with the organization. So huge returns to the organization, often in subtle, hidden ways, though. As a manager, how do you cultivate a more civil workplace? What are some tips? Well, I think one of the most important things and best returns is actually recruiting and selecting employees that you know come into the workplace with norms for treating people well. Uh, the other thing, though, is setting expectations for, you know, we value this, uh, we expect it. I think especially leaders set the tone and then practicing it. So getting people coaching if they really struggle in this area. I think a lot of incivility stems from a lack of self-awareness. And so just getting them feedback about what are the little things that you could do to have better influence and effectiveness. What are some examples of civil behavior? So I think it's subtle things. It can be smiling, saying hello in the hallways, uh, acknowledging people, uh, sharing credit, thanking people is huge. Listening is probably the biggest one that I think leaders struggle on now, oftentimes because we're multitasking. You know, you're on your iPhone or, um, you know, looking at email, things like that. And it really rubs people the wrong way. So really just trying to be very mindful and paying attention goes a long way for people. And lastly, if someone is working in a workplace where they feel like there's not a very good environment, what are one or two ways that you think they could change their environment? The one thing that buffers the effects of incivility is thriving. And that can be accomplished at work, whether it's um, taking on things where they feel a sense of progress, they feel a sense of learning. Uh, you know, it could be navigating the situation with a boss, you know, trying to figure out, like, 
How could they make this better? But I think a big thing could be outside of the workplace because what we find is people that are thriving in their non-work lives actually bring stronger, more resilient selves into the workplace such that it, it doesn't tear them down as much. You know, it doesn't distract them as much. So I think that that's really key. As for civility in politics, according to a new KRC Research Civility in America poll, Americans in both political parties agree that uncivil behavior is rampant and getting worse. We'll be right back. Mesothelioma is a rare cancer, late to asbestos. 